All right, so I was sitting here in my garage just messing with the bikes. Um, I got fairing kit from my R6. There's some pieces right there, but I got a fairing kit for the R6. I dropped it a couple weeks ago. Um, I was just in a rush to work, and I usually have to go around the driveway onto the lawn to pull the bike out. It was raining that morning, and got got a bunch of wet grass on the tire on the back and I tried to make a U-turn really fast and I slipped so I dropped the bike um but I mean I put that fairing on or that piece on for now and it looks okay for now I need to you know finish the rest of it but it's hard to when it's your daily and um I don't really have the chance to lay all the fairings out sand them paint them and all that but I'll get to it and then I'm making a video on the SV650. Uh, I'm doing them, changing the motor out. And uh, I've been putting clips together and all that. So I'm going to try to make a halfway decent video. Um, and I'll put that up too. Because um, I know there's a lot of uh, SV guys out there that probably appreciate it. The more info, the better, right? And... Um, I got the shadow. I honestly don't know when I'm going to get to this. Um, hopefully soon. I would love to write it this summer, but we'll see. Anyways, I was thinking about um, motorcycle culture and how everything is right now. And uh, I've been seeing a lot of like, I've been paying attention lately to what the new manufacturers are selling. And it's kind of sad uh, what the new bikes are coming out with now they're not really inspired i feel like they're very dull and um i feel like there's a lot of reasons for that and i think the biggest one is that i think motorcycle culture is just kind of slowly dying um one thing is the collectors so <clears throat> there's a bunch of guys out there that you know want to buy bikes that are low mileage super clean whatever and you know that's great like who doesn't want a clean low mileage bike? But the problem is, is that they buy them and then they never ride them. They buy these bikes and they put them in the garage, never to be seen again. And I think a huge part of what keeps the culture going and what inspires the next generation is when they see these bikes on the street or out and about, you know, when they're just out and about. Um, I'm sure we can all relate that when we were kids, one of the things that inspired us to get into motorcycles or cars or whatever when we were a kid is that we saw some sick ride rolling down the street and we were like, whoa, what is that? You know, and then that got us into all of that. But as time goes on, I notice less and less, there's less and less car shows, car get togethers, there's less and less bike shows, bike get togethers. And it's just becoming this thing where, Nobody, nobody ever sees these things. And, and I feel like the next generation doesn't, they're getting to a point where they don't even care. Like I've talked to dudes that are just only like 10 years younger than me. They don't care about bikes or cars anymore. I mean, rarely it seemed like back then, or at least like with my dad's generation, like everybody was a gearhead and everybody had a hot rod or a cool motorcycle or something. And a lot of my friends when I was in high school didn't really care about cars or bikes that much. I mean, some did. It was kind of a rare thing. I would say like maybe an eighth of the guys that I went to school with were into that stuff. Now it's more like one out of 20 or less than that. It's kind of sad. Um, and, the you know, you're putting the bikes away just for the hopes of what? That it's going to be worth something one day? I don't know. Another thing is these guys that are quote unquote flippers, flippers, uh, you know, they're out there because now that, now that bike, now that some bikes are worth some money, there's guys out there that are trying to constantly get money out of it, get money out of the hobby when it really shouldn't be about the money. It should just be about the hobby. So you got guys out there that are into this stuff but they're not into it for the hobby. They're not into it for the ride, for the friends, for the memories. They're in, they're in it for the money. So they're out there 
and they want to buy your bike for as cheap as possible. You post your bike, you know, you got, let's say, let's say I'm trying to sell my R6, right? I think it's not the best R6 in the world, but let's say I post it for like five grand, right? It's in good shape, runs really well. Um, all that. I, I take care of it as, as much as I can. And this guy will come along and be like, I'll give you $2,000 for it. And it's like, okay, fine. Like whether I agree to it or not, they end up buying that. They end up buying my bike. And then literally a week later, they'll be trying to sell it for six, 7,000. They haven't done anything to the bike. And then they'll put in their price firm. Don't even don't low ball me. No low ballers. I know what I got. Oh, uh, you see it a lot, a lot, a lot on Insta or on Instagram. Um, Facebook Marketplace, um, on Facebook Marketplace, on Craigslist, offer up, let go, whatever, um, wherever you go to try to look for bikes, there's always somebody on there that's got a total piece of shit that wants way too much money for it, and he will not let it go, and the bike ends up being on the online for a year, two years, whatever. Because he thinks he's a flipper. He thinks that he can make a ton of money. He thinks he knows how to, you know, and it's just not, I don't know, man. I don't agree with that at all. Um, I just, what happened to, what happened to giving somebody a fair deal? You know, like if you got something, I mean, yeah, if you got a really, really freaking nice bike, sure. You know, you have the right to be like, you know, if you, if you got, if you got a really nice bike and people are just constantly bugging you about it like dude let me get that bike let me get that bike please let me get that then sure yeah you have the right to go online and be like no low ballers i know what i got but if you have a bike sitting in the back of your backyard all the way in the corner buried in gardening tools and all this other shit and grass and then you just barely like dig it out and you put it on craigslist like i know what i got and nobody's calling you dude you don't know what you got you really don't um, and you really need to bring that price down, dude. Let the next guy have it and enjoy it. Um, there's no, there's no point in doing all that. If the bike is sentimental to you and you know, all that, then don't even sell it, keep it, fix it, do something with it. But other than that, it's like, I don't know. I just don't get these people anymore, man. Um, another person that to me is also trying to kill the motorcycle culture is just Karens. Um, just people that, you know, they feel like, oh, everything should be illegal. Everything is dangerous. Like, it's like those people that are like all the gear all the time. Like, if you don't have, you know, full on race suit when you just want to go to the store and pick up some candy or whatever, oh, then, you know, you're, you're in their eyes, you're breaking some type of law and you should be completely punished. And, you know, I've seen videos online where people like, you know, get into an accident and, you know, whether it is or isn't their fault might be debatable, but there's even videos where I've seen where it's really not the person's fault. Like the truck just came and hit them and they got knocked off their bike. And just because they're not wearing a full on race suit, like people are like, Oh, that's what you get for not wearing gear. Uh, you know, wear gear next time like what the i mean come on dude why i don't understand like yes sure there are people that you know out there uh you know doing 100 on the freeway with no helmet on yeah sure like you could say those people are asking for it but i still wouldn't wish it on them man like there's no point in in just this whole negativity of like uh, like everything i don't know then there's a whole thing where, um, of, uh, like people buying too much bike. <clears throat> I think, you know, nobody knows. Well, yeah, I feel like nobody knows better than you what you can handle, uh, for the most part. I mean, yeah, sometimes people get in over their heads, they buy a bike that is too much for them or whatever, but. I feel like for the most part, most people are smart enough to know what kind of bike they need. They know what feels good for them. They know what what they like. <clears throat> and I'm tired of people 
saying, oh, you shouldn't get that 500 is too much for you. You shouldn't get a 650 is too much for you. Like if they, if that person feels like they can handle it, let them, let them do their thing. We're all adults in this hobby. We're all adults. We all can make our own decisions. I think you need to just like back off a little bit, like let people do their thing. Now, if you see some, some, you know, 18 year old kid that just got his license and he wants to hop on a leader bike. Fine. I can understand why, you know, you'd be a little bit concerned and you just kind of let that person know, Hey, like, you know, a bike is, is no joke. A bike is very serious. Like, you know, maybe try, maybe try something smaller, maybe get a 500, maybe just learn how to ride a little bit. Like that's, that's what I tell younger, younger heads. Like, you know, there's nothing wrong with learning how to ride first. And you can get, you know, once you once you get the hang of it, then you can go get whatever you want. But there's no point in just yelling at them. And, you know, it's not going to make them listen to you. Um, And they're going to they're going to end up going to do what they want to do anyway. But another thing I wanted to talk about is I've I seen posts <clears throat> on like Reddit and stuff where people are even saying that motorcycles should be banned illegal because they're too dangerous. And, you know, you got the people saying that Isle of Man should be banned and, like, all this stuff. And <clears throat> at the end of the day, like, I feel like, again, we're all adults. We all make our own decisions. And, you know, if, if those are the things that these people want to do, then they should be allowed to do so. Like, I'm a live and let live type of guy. And if you want to, you know, you want to do any of that stuff, I say go for it. Like, that's your that's your choice. And all that, so there's that. Um, and the fourth and final person that I think is killing motorcycle culture, and this might be a little bit hot, controversial, whatever you want to call it, but I really think it's the YouTuber elitist crowd. And you got guys like, you know, I don't, I'm not trying to name drop on people just because, but. You got guys like Yami Noob, for example, and, um, you know, he has a lot of videos where he tells people, you know, don't get this much, you know, don't get this bike, don't, you know, it's too much for you, beginner riders, blah, blah, blah. Fine. Fair enough. But when, when you're looking, when you got people that are actually like somewhat experienced riders, and I think it doesn't take a lot to get ready for a 600 Super Sport. Like, I don't know. It just, there's people that even start off on these things. I don't think that these bikes are so insanely powerful that, you know, as soon as you get on one, it's going to freaking throw you off and kill you. I think the most dangerous thing about fast bikes is people that don't know their limits. That's really what's going to kill you at the end of the day. And that could kill you on any bike. It doesn't have to be a super fast bike, just any, any motorcycle. You don't know the bike's limits. You don't know your limit. That's what's going to kill you at the end of the day. But I'm just so sick of these videos. I've seen, I've seen like so many YouTubers say this with every bike that comes out. Like for example, right now with the new Kawasaki, uh, ZX four RR, I've been watching a ton of reviews on it and there's guys that are like, Oh, um, like, this bike doesn't have a place. Um, like, who is this bike for? And it's like, dude, it's for people who want to have fun. Like, how about that? Like, somebody that just wants to get used to riding something kind of like a race bike. It's an entry-level race bike. Let's be real. A zx 4 R is an entry-level race bike. And I think that's fucking awesome that Kawasaki is building something like that. While all these other manufacturers, and I fucking love Yamaha, dude, like R6, R1, those are my favorite bikes, but even Yamaha is backing away from making all these fun bikes, you know, like the R7 may be a good bike, but it'll never be an R6. It'll never be an R6. I don't care what you say. It'll never sound like an R6. It'll never ride like an R6. It's just not an R6. Um, to me, like the R7 is more like SV650, 
But um, yeah, with the with the ZX4 double R, I just feel like it exposed a lot of the mindset behind these YouTubers that tell you you don't need this much power, you don't need that much bike. They don't even care how experienced you are. They just tell you you don't need that much bike because you'll never be able to experience all the potential on the street. Who cares? It's a fun fucking bike. And if you want to buy one, you should be able to. Um, same thing with, uh, you know, 600s and leader bikes. I don't, I don't freaking like, I literally ride this thing daily. I don't freaking act like I'm in the Moto GP or whatever, like every single day that I'm out there riding around. No, sometimes it's just fun to hit the freeway ramp um, and just give it all the bikes got. Maybe lift the front wheel up a little bit. That's it. Like, that's all people want at the end of the day. Uh, well, most people. That's all what most people want at the end of the day is just to get on the throttle a little bit, hit the twisties a little bit, and just feel alive. Like, And, yeah, you can do it on a 650. You can do it on a 500. You can do it on a 250. You could do it on a big cruiser bike. But at the end of the day, if if you want a 600, you want a leader bike, I feel like you should be able to do so. I don't see the big deal. I don't get why YouTubers, of all people, are trying to talk you out of having fun on your bike. I don't understand. Um, and, it, and I'm not saying you need one of these bikes. Don't get me... Don't get my words twisted. I'm not saying you need one of these bikes to have fun. I just said you could do it on a 650. You could do it on a cruiser, whatever. I don't get why they're trying to talk you out of getting a 600 or a liter bike. If that's what you want, you should be able to get one. And also on top of all this, don't listen to anybody that says you can't daily ride a 600 or a liter bike. I daily ride this bike. I mean, you could tell it's pretty dirty. I, I ride this thing daily, and my back is fine. I'm not limping around everywhere I go. It's totally fine, dude. Trust me when I say, if you want a 600 and you want to daily ride it, go for it. Um, you know, whatever, whatever bike you want. If that's the bike you want, go for it. Don't let any YouTuber or moto blogger or whatever, don't let anybody tell you you can't have that. If it's there and you can afford it and you want it, buy it. There's nothing stopping you. Do not let these guys tell you you can't have that or you shouldn't have that. You know, and, and even if the price point isn't perfect, right? A lot of guys will try to talk you out of it because, oh, you're paying too much for that bike. You're paying too much for that bike. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. I paid way too much for this R6, but you know what? This is, this was my, well, it is my dream bike. I always wanted one since I was a teenager. I finally got one and um, I'm having the time of my life, dude. Every time I get on this bike, I smile, I laugh. I'm having the best time so don't let anybody tell you what bike you can or cannot get anyways that's it that's really all i wanted to say um this is not really a polished video and i know the video quality is pretty bad um my phone isn't the greatest i'm working on getting some cameras and stuff. I do want to do more stuff. Um, just because I want to help. I want to help the community out. I just feel like there's a lot of. There's a lot of stuff we're doing wrong. And um, not just with bikes. With cars too. And I'm actually going to make more. Stuff about cars and whatnot. But. You know. I'll get to it when I get to it. Uh, for now. That's all I wanted to say. And. Um. Yeah, hopefully somebody appreciates this video. So that's it. All right, peace.